reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was open, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. Verbum Domini. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. 
Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. Verbum Domini. Sancti Evangelii secundum Luca. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed, the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Verbum Domini.
all of the great spiritual writers write about being ascended or ascending, rising in the grace of God. And we see this most perfectly in the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, we live in a world where there is much evil, much sin. But Mary shows us how to rise above what is in the world. She lives grace, the life of grace, again, most perfectly. And she gives us an example. In fact, Mary is always rising above what is evil and what is bad in the world. And as we see today, she's continually rising. She rises into heaven. She's assumed into heaven because of, her, because of, of the way she cooperates with grace, because of, because of such a union with her son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And throughout the life of Mary, you know, living in, in uh, of course, uh, Nazareth and throughout Israel, a uh, short time of Bethlehem, um, you know, going here and there from Egypt and back to Nazareth again. We see her in Jerusalem. We know all the events of the life of Jesus Christ. But in throughout all everything, whatever is happening, what, whatever circumstances are present, she always responds with such charity, with such um, purity, and we see this most especially, most profoundly, when Jesus is suffering his passion and death. You know, there uh, she is with you know, Mary Magdalene, St. John. There they are. You know, the other disciples have, have just quit. You know, they, they've caved in to what they see, to the circumstances around them, to the evil they are seeing and even experiencing. But Mary doesn't. She's able to rise above it. And again, so Mary is always, always rising. We, we always see that in her life. And today in the book of Revelations, we hear about, uh, about the Ark of the Covenant. You know, the Virgin Mary, she is considered the Ark of the Covenant. That's her title. That's who she is because she, uh, and she was uh, mother of the Lord, carried him in her womb. You know, we have a great image of this today in, uh, the, with the account of the visitation. And so, you know, she's so, again, so united with him. And then later, further, a little further on, we hear again of, of a lady crowned with 12 stars. This is, this is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And then after, towards the end of these uh, passages, there is, there is her defeating Satan, the evil one who was cast out uh, of heaven. And so this is, this is the life of Mary. Again, always rising, always raising above. And you know, Mary, you know, like, like us, she, she's, she's, she's a human being. You know, she's, of course, you know, as a human, as a, as a child of Adam, she's in need of salvation. But yet she, she enjoys this salvation more perfectly, more sublimely because of her cooperation in the order of grace. And, you know, us, as baptized, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Mary, of course, is a temple of the Holy Spirit, being conceived by the Holy Spirit. She's full of the Holy Spirit. Her whole life is, is of one who walks in the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is important for us to know, because, again, looking to her, when we look to her, when we look to Mary, you know, she shows us an example of how to live as Christians but at the same time, she's pointing us toward her son, teaching us, showing us how to live and to love like him. And so we live in this world of where there is much darkness. You know, and you know, all you gotta do is turn on the news, you see everything going on, you wanna give up. You wanna just say, well, hey, you know, that, that's it. It's coming to an end. But look to Mary. This is why it's so important that we pray the rosary. See, when, we, when we're praying the rosary, we're asking Mary for her intercession. And at, the, at that time, we are meditating on the life of Jesus, 
See, and throughout, this is a whole meditation through, of, of, of his whole life, but she's with us, teaching us. And that at the same time is, should or should be doing something within us, should be calling us forward to rise up in the ways of the Lord, as Mary has done. See, this is, this is the call of grace here. This is a grace in our lives. As I said, we are temples of the Holy Spirit, called to rise above the, these things in the earth. Sometimes we just want to give up. But no, we are people who have given, who've been given the grace, the power of the resurrection, so that we may have victory over these things of the world. And what is this raising up? What is this raising up? Is it being haughty and looking down on, on the people who sin? No, it's rising into the ways of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And I think it's so providential in the divine plan of God that this network be founded on this particular day, this solemn day of the solemnity of the, of, of the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven. See, well, first of all, this network is, of course, founded on, on the love of God. You know, Mother Angelica loved the Lord so much, and all she wanted to do was communicate him, tell others about him, because she was so in love with him. And then, but if we look back to when Mother came to the network and established it, or, or not to the network, but to the, established the monastery back in 1962, what was the name of the monastery? Our Lady of the Angels. Our Lady of the Angels Monastery. So it has its roots in the love and the prayers and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Mother Angelica, coming here in 1962, had no idea that she would start this, um, this television network that has become uh, you know, a, a very large uh, communication enterprise, multimedia. And, but yet, God had his hand on it all along. God had other plans she did not know of, but she was faithful and obedient to these things. And so, you know, we see, but what, is the, what does the network do for us? Well, with, with, of course, through the grace of the Lord, through the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we hear the truth. We hear the truth of Jesus Christ. His love, at the same time, is being communicated to us. He loves us, so he gives us these truths. And what does this do for us? This helps us to rise, you know, to rise in, in the grace of God, to go above what is and beyond what, what we see here in the earth. This teaches us the ways of Jesus Christ so that we can rise up with him. So it's so, it's so, so beautiful and so powerful to, to think of it that way, but that's, that's in the plan of God. And it's, again, so providential and so beautiful. And so, my brothers and sisters, we look to the words of, of St. Paul today also, who, you know, uh, we, we live in this world, and uh, yeah, sin abounds, death abounds, and all this, and everything, but he tells us that grace abounds all the more. And so today, we be reminded, of course, of looking to our Blessed Virgin Mary, who gives us this, this great example of, of one who's always in the grace of God. You know, for us, too, we've received all these graces so that we can live and love like Jesus Christ, so that we share in his divine life. You know, so whatever you're experiencing this life, look to Jesus because he experienced the same, too. Mary as well, but they rose above it. So now, you know, looking to their example, rise above. Do not be defeated by what you see in the world, but look to Jesus Christ. Ask for the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in due time, God willing, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we can say with St. Paul that it is no longer I that live, but Jesus Christ who lives in me. God bless you all.